testing, test. Okay, that works. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming. It's five o'clock and I call this special call session to order. Please bow your heads as I pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us this opportunity to convene this day, the second day of fall, and seek decisions worthy of our township to sustain and improve the quality of life for all of our residents. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Janice's left the room. All right. Let the record show that all council members are here. And then, uh, hello, Janice. Thank you. All right. May the record reflect that all council members are here. And we go to old business will discuss and take possible action to approve proposals for city insurance benefits and select a vendor and um, what I my intention was to do today was to allow each of the vendors 12 minutes to present the strengths of their uh, specific program and uh, and then allow eight minutes for council members to ask any questions they deem relevant and uh, if there's a sufficient need for additional time and council requests, we can make such amendments. And um, I was going to ask Lewis to uh, the gentleman from TML to please come up. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Pardon? I'm sorry. One second, please. Are we not getting numbers from both? I'm looking at the packet. Uh, we have TML, right? Yes. Yeah. Do we have your package? Yeah, I have it up here. Do y'all want me to give it to you now or before? Uh, well, I'd like to see it if we're going to be voting on it. Yeah, no, I was going to give it to you. If you want it now, I can give it to you. 
Yeah, there is. I would like to have had it, you know, a couple of days ago when, you know, that was the whole purpose of this meeting. But, you know, this last minute stuff is is not uh, doesn't sit well with me at all. Well, Understood. The, uh, the reason for that is travelers got us the figures this morning. Um, and it took well, if travelers wants the business, they need to get it to us in a timely fashion. Well, they, they, not they, the time of the meeting. This is ridiculous. That's the whole reason for having this meeting, um, the special meeting, is to, to do the insurance thing. And I would have appreciated if we would have had all the information that we should have had for this meeting. Understood. And they are current and sure. Understood. All right. Thank you. Please state your name and your company. I'm sorry, is your microphone on, sir, for the podium? Just want to make sure. There you go. Thank you. Try that well, again. Again. Hand out a brochure. Thank you. All righty. Let me start by saying thank you very much for allowing us to give you a proposal um, we felt that it was a comparative proposal to what you have now um, prior to this the city was has been one of our oldest members back I believe in 1985 you all joined the risk pool um, then two years ago you left so anyway back uh, in 1974 uh, the TML was created to provide cities around the state of Texas with insurance because the private market was unstable at that time before that they were charging basically cities whatever they, they wanted. So in 1974, the state uh, created TML uh, in order to battle those fluctuations that the cities were going against the private insurance companies. Uh, currently, TML, we've got 96% of the cities in the state of Texas in our poll. Um, the only ones we don't cover are the big ones like San Antonio, Houston, Austin, Dallas, because they're big enough to self-insure themselves. Um, we cover about 170,000 employee, uh, employees around the state of Texas for workers' compensation, and we also cover about $28 million, $28 billion in uh, government property. Um, we also have a uh, claims office here off of 410 with three claims people staffed and one loss prevention person that are available at any time you can pick up the phone and talk to them. Also in Austin, we have four attorneys that uh, are with the risk pool, and you can pick up the phone and answer your questions anytime they want. Um, one of the things uh, we have is uh, Call Before You Fire. It's a program that's been really useful around the state. A lot of our local government staff members have called right before they discipline an employee, so there won't be any claims involved, make sure they dot their I's and cover their T's. Um, we also hire local attorneys when you have any claims or lawsuits because we feel that they know the judges and local rules. You know, we're not going to hire an attorney from Dallas or Houston and bring him in. Um, we also provide services that the private insurance company does not. Um, we provide training when it comes to police, fire, public works. Um, we tailor make our coverages also um, for cities around the state of Texas. So, with that, I'll answer your questions. When you said training, what do you mean by training? Uh, we provide online training. We provide on-site training to our members around the state of Texas. We do. Uh, we hold seminars here around the San Antonio area, and we let make sure that all our members know about it so they can sign up the appropriate the appropriate employees that, that want to go uh, training it could be law enforcement uh, maybe we'll bring in one of our law enforcement people we have on staff or maybe we'll hire somebody with the expertise to come in and do specific training for that city if they ask for it uh, it could be also fire related uh, public works um, Yes, ma'am. That's all included in the price. So we we pride ourselves as a service organization for the cities across the state of Texas. And you, your insurance company just covers cities, 
piece. It does, it does not cover, like, if I wanted insurance for me personally at home or something. It's yes, just cities. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. We cover uh, 2,800 local governments around the state of Texas. So we open it up to, like, appraisal districts and water districts. But our biggest members are cities across the state. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions from the other council members? I know I'm, I was... I was curious to know, I was reading an article that came out in yesterday's Express News that was specifically talking about ransomware. Mm -hmm. And I know we had uh, mentioned the markets in Florida and some Texas markets that had been um, hit with it and had settled, had to settle with, for six-figure <clears throat> amounts to get their encrypted data recovered and return to them and um, um, in almost in every case that I read about the municipalities all said well it was covered by insurance and um, I was seeking clarification on the extent of coverage uh, in an event like that and uh, the, the specifics it was an interesting article. The, the Associated Press writer said that 22 Texas communities were hit with cyber theft in the last month. And yet the Texas, what is it, the Texas Research Information Department said they weren't aware of any occurrences. Um, that's just a, that's an, that's an surprising, uh, discrepancy. Can you share what TML is doing to try to combat that? Um, uh, yes, sir. We offer training on the cyber side. We contract with Risk Hub, their leader in cyber and security uh, around not only the United States but around the world. And whenever there is a breach, uh, we ask them to contact our cities to walk them through the process. Um, a lot of times you don't hear about these attacks because the Secret Service and FBI are involved and they tell them to keep it on the down low for security reasons. But I can tell you right now we're dealing with over 20 cyber cases right now around the state, maybe more. So it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Um, we think it's only going to get worse. So we, uh, we're doing more training in that, in that field and uh, I think it's a lot of our local governments are starting to wake up and realize that, you know, their IT systems aren't secure like they should be. But uh, it's, it's hopefully it's going to get better. <clears throat> I know there's a stated aggregate limit of $50,000, all damages, expenses, and costs. Um, if, if we're concerned about the protection of our data and we don't think that's sufficient, what are our options? Do we need to go to a third party or? Well, AIG was mentioned in the article as, right. a, as a. Our cyber liability is covered under our general liability and there's no additional cost. It's built in there. Uh, we give you an, uh, up to a million dollars aggregate in one year. Um, the $50,000 you were mentioning is a sublimit. But if you would like higher limits, we can, I sent you, I, th I believe I can send an application for you to fill out. And you're welcome to buy uh, higher limits if you feel you need it. Okay, thank you. Can you can you? I'm looking at um, what Matt submitted on a comparison of the workers' compensation part, and it has um, has TML being listed with a limit of 100 slash 500 slash 100, where Travelers has a million. Can you? What is what's up with that? Uh, well, workers' comp is statutory. Um, it's basically created by the state of Texas. I can tell you we're dealing with, you know, probably more than five claims that are over a million dollars right now, whether it's with firefighters, with the presumption bill, or people who are quadriplegic. So basically there's, you know, there's no limit in what... Uh, what so, we, so what would... Is this incorrect, what he has on there, that it's 100 slash 500 slash 100? Yes, ma'am. That's incorrect? That is incorrect. Okay. So it, it, there is no limit. Is that correct? No, ma'am. Okay. We have claims that we've, we've handled for over probably 25 years that are still ongoing right now. Okay. Okay. 
That's alarming. All right. Well, thank you very much. Any other questions from council? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Louis. Thanks, right. thank for you. coming. Right. Thank you for having us. <clears throat> Matt Emmerman, please state your name and your company and please share us. Matt Ammerman, Ammerman Insurance, and also have uh, Hector Ortega here. He's a representative with Travelers. Um, so I was uh, just kind of want to go back to um, the comments earlier, uh, Councilman Bailey. I had the information given to me last week after the meeting. I had to get that information back to the Travelers underwriters, and Hector here can explain to you that they don't just turn it the quotes back around to us for renewal. So I apologize if I'd have had it earlier, I'd have gotten it to you guys earlier. So it's really out of my hands in regards to that. So um, there, and Hector can speak to that, but I was instructed to put together a uh, summary of insurance for you guys and a comparison between the two, something similar that I did in uh, 2017. And so if we want to go line by line, I mean, I can give you, um, I think what's most important, and that's just the, the, the coverages that and how they compare to TML and also, um, you know, the, the, the limits of liability. Um, the auto um, is pretty self-explanatory there in regards to the limits and, and the premiums associated with that for the physical damage as well. Um, and just please stop me if you all have any questions. Um, a general liability um, they're at two million four million to come up to um, our one point or our one million two million is 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 higher than that because we have an umbrella right now of a million of and so our our umbrella will extend over the limits of liability for each underlying coverage so just to um, give a brief explanation if we have an auto accident out there uh, with the police vehicle or, or really any company, I'm sorry, city vehicle, we and it goes in excess of that one million, then we've got an umbrella that will um, that will go up to a million. And I gave options to on the last page to address um, higher umbrella limits if y'all want to entertain those and what the premiums are associated with that. So that's a real benefit. Um, the employee benefits liability. We uh, that that basically covers you if you forget to add somebody um, to your employee benefits plan and they have claims associated with their health insurance. Um, I did not see that uh, TML has that coverage, but we've got that in there. Um, the public uh, officials liability. Um, you can see those limits of liability as well. The employment practices liability. Um, we've got two outstanding claims that are going on right now um, inside the city. Um, these, this looks to me like it's provided as a uh, is included in their public officials liability. Ours is a separate limit of liability along with the umbrella that would uh, go over and above that. So um, that's having that as a separate liability and travelers has all the training as well. We've talked about that back in August and we talked about it when this policy was implemented. Um, it's online and we, and we certainly have the same types of classes for the city to take at their convenience in regards to hiring and firing and doing those things properly. Um, the law enforcement liability is also um, one million, two million, but again, the, the umbrella is, is on there to uh, increase those limits um, if needed. Um, so that's the, the, next, the next column there is just the uh, one million dollar umbrella option. Um, and then we've got the property um, and the benefit or the, uh, the limits associated with the property there um, for you to see. Uh, the deductibles associated with each one of those in comparison and then the scheduled property which is your inland marine um, equipment that the city owns um, that's basically in transit right exactly yeah in transit um, so um, and then you know we get back into the on the back page is the cyber liability and again i I, uh, we went outside of 
travelers. Um, it's a benefit of us being an independent agency. Got coalition to um, quote that for us. That was the uh, proposal I gave to you guys in August um, at, at the council meeting. Um, really looking at, at TML's uh, quote and what they provide in their coverages um, doesn't compare um, in, in a lot of areas to the coalition um, quote that we've given. Um, one of the biggest is the funds the funds transfer fraud um, that we experienced. This one has 500,000. Um, I, I tried to fill in some of the sublimits that they have underneath the million, but it's extremely important to understand how this cyber uh, insurance works and the coverage associated with it. So, um, you know, they'll they'll come in and and do the uh, prerequisites and 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 looking at the systems and to see how they uh, they add up in regards to. Uh, whether or not there's um, liability associated with the way that the systems are set up now or there's any kind of virus protection that needs to be put on. So they're very consultative in their approach, which I don't, I don't know, I've already spoke about that in August, so I don't want to go into that too much. But uh, just revisiting the proposal highlights there, I think you'll see um, those limits that, that we've got there on the on the coalition proposal are, are strong and you should feel good about those. Um, and then we get into the crime um, and um, the dishonesty limits and whatnot are, are fairly the same. And the workers' comp, um, again, I asked what the statutory limits were. Uh, Councilman Truman in the state of Texas, and I've been doing this for 22 years, I know they are 100, 500, 100. I don't know how TML works in regards to them having an unlimited amount, so I didn't. I did not say that, you know, their amount was limited or unlimited. I, I, I don't understand um, how that works. I do know that we have 100, or I'm sorry, 1 million. So that's going to be for bodily injury, um, each accident, and, and, and the policy limit, and then also for disease as well, and the 1 million umbrella that would kick in on top of that. Um, certainly is very important with, uh, you know, the firefighters and our uh, police that are out there, if we had fa ever faced a death claim, or we're seeing a lot more of the firemen bring suits towards cities in regards to illnesses like cancer and whatnot due to the job. So, um, again, that's that's the limits that Travelers provides, um, and you can see there with the uh, the premiums there at the end and the difference uh, in what we're proposing. So, um, we have any questions in regards to what I've proposed so far. Thank you for sharing that, Matt. Um, <clears throat> when you mentioned the the uh, workman's comp, um, if it's per accident and there are multiple police or firefighters involved, uh, wouldn't the limit be consumed very quickly, or is that per person involved in that accident? It's per person involved, and then we have a policy limit of a million. So, I mean, it could it could potentially be consumed fairly quickly. I mean, if does the if umbrella we did, have anything? To it do does. With the umbrella sits on top of that. Yeah. The umbrella would add another million. million yes. And that's, yeah. Then that's the aggregate. Correct. Yeah, that would be that would be the full limits. And then, again, at the bottom there, if you wanted to entertain a two or three or four or five million dollar umbrella, um, you can see the difference in, in the premium on an annual basis. Hector, do you have anything in regards to the workers' comp that you'd like to add? Would you like to step up to the mic? Thank you. Thanks, People all over the world can <laughs> embrace your message. Thanks, thanks for uh, having state me. your name. <laughs> Hector Ortega, Travelers Public Sector. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, you know, as, as, as Matt mentioned, we do have the different umbrella options at the, the bottom of the proposal. Um, typically, we recommend a $5 million umbrella to our, our, our munis across the state. Um, you know, we, we're seeing more and more, uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, 
cancer claims with the work comp. A lot of firefighter uh, lung cancer claims kind of pop up. And the scary part about that piece is that those can come in five, ten years uh, down the line, right? Um, so we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, those come in. Law enforcement is another line of business we're seeing um, more claims and higher payouts. So uh, that's the other reason we recommend the higher umbrella limit for uh, for that line of business as well. Um, I mean, you 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 get home at night and you turn the TV on and there's some sort of uh, incident across the country, whether it's uh, excessive force, excessive arrest, wrongful arrest, and once it hits the media, it's, it's going to get pricey. So um, that's kind of a safe safe number. You currently carry a one million dollar umbrella um, over over the underlying piece. Uh, one million two, so it's 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 a pretty good uh pretty good limit for for the size of your city, but um, you know we, we we'd rather you guys be protected in, in case of the unknown. Um, quick recap of travelers, you know we we're we're one of the largest uh, insurance companies in, in the country, um, thirty thousand plus employees. Uh, in Texas, we we have three offices: uh, Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. Uh, my office is right down two eighty one in, in Jones Mossberger. Uh, out of our office, we handle public entities across the state. Uh, we also have claim services, loss control services um, provided out of our office. Um, as far as training goes, very similar training uh, as far as law enforcement, fire goes. Uh, our popular training uh, today is fleet safety and distracted driving. Um, we're seeing a, an increase across the industry uh, with distracted, distracted driving. You may, you may have seen auto your personal auto uh, uh, rates increased the last couple of years. Um, the auto industry as a whole has been unprofitable, um, so we're trying to kind of kind of tackle that and, and and provide some training to our clients so that we can avoid those distracted driving um, scenarios. Right? You got your cell phone. You got. I mean, it's scary driving down 281 when I'm heading to work. You got people putting on makeup, <coughs> eating, texting. Um, so uh, we're trying to to avoid that. And obviously, you got your law enforcement officials, right? Who um, you know, God bless them. You know, they're, they're, they got their, their walkie-talkies, their laptops, uh, um, chasing people down 281, right? So we're, 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 we're trying to help, help them out as well, um, kind of multitask and, and prevent some of those, some of those uh, uh, preventable uh, claims and losses. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. How many cities do you insure? So in the state of Texas, we insure about 30 municipalities, okay, cities. Um, we also uh, provide insurance to counties and school districts in the state of Texas. So uh, public entities include cities, counties, water, uh, uh, cities, counties, school districts, uh, water, sewer, uh, utility districts. So um, we're the largest par public entity commercial carrier in the state of Texas. And we, we provide uh, insurance to public entities across the country as well. I've got one more question. Yes, Pertaining to the workman's comp, um, most most of the time you think about someone getting injured on the job. Well, I've had several friends where their husbands were actually killed on the job where they continue for the rest of their life unless they remarry to draw 75% of their income, tax-free money. So that million could, if it's a young person, that million could be eaten up very quickly. Correct. It could it could be exhausted, um, depending on on the salary, uh, right, and, and the percentage of the of the of the salary, uh, b which. So yes, your, the answer the, the the short answer is yes, it could, right. Obviously, it depends on salary, um, whether they remarry or not, how you know, uh, kids, ages, uh, etc. And what is the percentage that you guys charge for um, the compensation? <coughs> Right when out of payroll schedule and stuff like that. So I'm not sure what. I, what, what well, your I'm question looking is. here at, at TML's workman's comp compensation, and it's got different rates for uh, firefighters versus policemen versus you know messengers, social workers, um, parks and recs. I was just curious what your percentage is. So we can provide that information via our work comp rating worksheets. Um, I don't. I don't think we have that with us. Do we, Matt? Yeah. So we have the summary of the total premium for work comp. Um, your, your current policy does have, does when, when the policy is issued, you, you do see the rates per per class code. 
um, per hundred, but but I wouldn't be able to tell you what the rate is per per different class code uh, today. I know we all appreciate your perspective, Jeff, uh, having worked with lots of companies and municipalities. Do you have any questions or thoughts that are relevant to this? We'll hand you a microphone. Okay. What I did was actually do some computations for you, okay? You take out the workers' comp, your liability insurance, travelers, it's what it is. Uh, they have some different coverages, and TML, TML has some different theirs, and travelers, you know, uh, there's different liability limits. 42,339, TML is 43,691, okay? So you're talking about $1,000 difference in liability. So if you're willing to accept the coverages of travelers, it would be fine. TML is fine, those are the same. The big part is the workers' comp, and there's a lot of talk about the million dollars and the limits, the statutory limits, and our city attorney will correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand on this, there's two parts of workers' compensation. One part is the, is the uh, entity's liability, which is for an accident happening or the death you're talking about, items like that. The, I think the 500-100 in there is the limit per person, the statutory, okay? So you can go up to like five, ten people or whatever, but that's statutory. The, the other side that people were talking about, and that's where the rating comes on the salaries, is the workers' compensation salary payments. And those, from what I could tell, are not limited. They can go for somebody's total life. Uh, I don't know what uh, the, the, the TML in here has 4% for insurance, 4% uh, for fire and 4% for police and about 4% for parks on their ratings. I cannot tell you what Travelers is this year, but I went and looked last year and it was in there, and theirs was $1.65 for police uh, and $1.60, something like that, for uh, fire. Now, I don't know how the rating is lower. I mean, I, my experience in cities, the four, five, six is about what most of them are for police and fire. That's what the ratings are because they charge you in more dangerous positions. I don't know whether the pool, uh, you know, it, it's, it's Travelers puts it out with the rest of the commercial businesses which don't have those kind of accidents and stuff, and so that lowers it down or whatever. But that is the difference, and that's how they rated it, and that's why the cost is $18,000. So basically your difference besides the small differences in the liability limits, you know, uh, because they have an umbrella policy on, is basically the workers' comp. And you're saying that works to our benefit, that they have a lower factor that they uh, use for calculation? I can't answer that because I'm not an attorney. I'd have to assume since they have a, a, a liability down there that, uh, that uh, if something happened, they would have to pay it. What about state regulated? Um, it is. It, is it, it was rated lower. Yeah. So... Uh, Travelers is the largest work comp carrier in the country. We're the second uh, largest work comp carrier in the state behind Texas Mutual. Um, that's one of the reasons we're able to get very competitive on that line of business. Um, as far as, as payouts, coverages go, work comp is a state regulated line. Um, so those are going to have no differences from a, from a coverage standpoint compared to our competitors across the state. I've got a real basic question. The workers' compensation, TML is 49502, Travelers 18172. Can you all explain why there's such a huge discrepancy? Mr. Villarreal, uh, the, the <clears throat> again, we that's one of the lines we do best across the country. Um, you know, we, we because, because we write so much comp across the country, being the largest work comp carrier in the country, um, we're able to get competitive on that line of business. As far as coverages go, you, there, there's no difference from a competitor work comp to a traveler's work comp because it is state regulated. That's a huge discrepancy. Yes, it is. Can we get TML's response to that? The same question I asked? Yes, sir. Thank you, Hector. 
Uh, yes, sir. I can say that our rates, we look at our members across the state and we hire an actuary every, every year to go in there and look at the numbers and we rate it, uh, like Jeff said, uh, on the risk of the nature of the occupation. So like police and fire, of course, that's going to be more riskier. Uh, public works, of course, that's a more riskier job than somebody, say, working inside the office. So uh, we look across the state. I mean, we only do, you know, the state of Texas. We don't go out of the state of Texas, and we look at all our cities and look at the loss ratios. And in order uh, to charge sufficient and pay out those claims, those are the rates that we charge. So we have those looked at every year. Sometimes they go up a little. Sometimes they go down. But I will tell you this because of the new fire uh, presumption bill that the legislature passed this past year. Uh, they expanded it from three cancers to 11 cancers. So we had to increase the rates on the firefighter and the volunteer firefighter side. And that made it go up substantially for all our cities across the state of Texas. Um, our actuary did a study. Uh, they predict it's going to cost us an extra $2.9 million to pay out those claims uh, around the state. Um, in two years from now, we'll go back to the legislature and ask to see if they can start a fund to help us pay out those claims. And if they do, then we'll be able to lower the rates. So. Um, Did you say on your workman's comp that y'all are unlimited? Or is it with these numbers, the 100, the 500? No, ma'am. It's, it's statutory. I mean, we have claims that are well into the millions. Our biggest claim, I believe, is right at $2.1 million that we're paying out. Um, but um, we we don't have a limit. You don't have a limit. Well, it's 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 statutory. Okay. The state of Texas mandates that all local governments have work carry workers' compensation, unlike the private sector. So, so the thirty thousand dollars that's a lot of difference. Yes, sir. But you're you have to remember too. We're including a lot of services that you're not getting right now, as far as loss prevention, claims handling, things of that nature. Thank you. Um, as a nonprofit, Lewis, uh, do you guys also provide dividends like, say, USAA does to their members, or how does that work? Yes, sir. Uh, we have $376 million of equity. Uh, every year, our actuary goes through uh, through our equity line. If he feels in that line, either liability, workers' comp, or property is doing very well, then we'll cut a check back to this to our cities. What is your history in that regard? Do you have any idea what they – I think – uh, since the inception of TML, I think we've given back probably close to $80 million uh, in equity returns to our members. Because it's your money. Um, you know, When you sign with TML, you sign an interlocal agreement with the other cities around San Antonio. So we look at it as a partnership. Um, the way it is now with travelers, I mean, you're basically giving your money to a stockholder. Just as a side note, I'd also uh, like to add on the limits of liability. We've included limits up to $10 million in the liability that's included there. So if you want more limits, we can go up to $10 million. That's that's why we think, we don't think that an umbrella is needed because we've included, like I said, the limits go up to $10 million. General liability? Uh, all, all across the lines. Law enforcement, errors, no missions, general uh Auto liability. And let me remind you also, the city attorney will back me up on this. On the general liability and on the auto, you're capped for how much you get sued under the Texas Tort Claims Act, under those two lines of coverage. The most anybody, two individuals can see you for is $500,000. So you, hit, you do have immunities in those two lines of coverages. What, what about the, the cyber coverage? Um, would the wire transfer fraudulent wire transfer have any of that been covered we would we would have turned it over to risk hub man but i don't i'm not familiar with all the peculiars of the claim uh -huh. you know and I, i'd have to you know look at it and turn it into our people to see if it would be covered but you know what matt has on here um for tml is that the, the the funds transfer fraud would not be covered at all uh I'd have to, like I said, I'd have to, you know, look at the claim and turn it into our claims people so they okay. could break it down. Okay. We would treat it just as any other claim. You would. Yes, ma'am. But I mean, we, I mean, we need to look at the facts first before, well, you know, we can see what we cover. Yeah. But we do. I mean, we have, you know, we give the limits up to a million dollars, and like I said, if you if you want higher limits, all we need is an application filled out, and we can get you higher limits. 
and sublimates too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Not yeah, Matt, please. All right. All right, so I'll finish up here um, and answer any questions you all have for me. But I can tell you that I looked at the cyber policy um, before you all moved from TMLT to Travelers and traded that with Mr. Uh, with uh, Mayor Murphy, and there was no funds transfer fraud, and I was able to review the coverage that was presented as well, and there's no funds transfer fraud, especially with uh, the, the, the claim that the city – has you know with, with with the breach and whatnot that you will see on the application for this cyber policy that I proposed back in in, in August they're well aware of that outstanding claim that's going on all right and just to uh, touch a little bit on 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 Jeff's comments about it being pretty much the same it's not because employment practices liability has its own separate limit. We have two outstanding claims that are well worth, or well north of $75,000, I think, between the two of them. One of them's, when I say outstanding, they're open, they're going. So the way I read TML is they share um, those limits are shared underneath their uh, public officials' liability, and I can tell you that um, there's uh, there, the, the cyber looking at it isn't, doesn't even compare to the cyber policy that I've proposed, and I would encourage you, and I can certainly, if y'all want to take longer, um, revisit the cyber policy that, uh, that that we went out and proposed to you guys in, in, in August, and you can take the binder that TML has given you, and you can flip. They have a one-page summary for cyber that um, y'all can open up back there, and we can go through that one page, and it'll be very quick to determine what coverage they have and what we're proposing. So um, certainly happy to do that if you all want. So, All right. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> May I have one more comment? Sure, Hector. Come on up. I know that work comes important to you guys, and, and there is a big difference in pricing. Um, I went back and looked, looked at your loss experience, right? So so the, the, the pricing is based off of your controls, and your loss experience, right? That's how our, our underwriter determines the price for the work comp. Uh, you guys have had four, to this is two years of coverage. You guys have experienced four total losses in work comp, four claims for a total of 17,000 in, in losses, right? So that's exceptional, right? So so ex uh, claim count is, is low, four, four claims in two years, and the payout has been 17,000. Your current premium is about eighteen thousand, right? Of one year, so two years travelers will collect about thirty-six thousand in premium, versus a payout of seventeen thousand in claims. So that's that's a profitable line of business for for travelers. So my underwriter tries to price your lines of business at a profitable margin for the travelers, which is what they did on this. They 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 saw your claims were low, which gives you guys a better premium, and then our risk control consultant. Uh, was here last year as well, meeting with 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 uh, your your staff, looking at controls, and those were all above average, which also helps with the with the competitive pricing. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Sure, please do. Um, on the cyber transfer, we offer computer fraud coverage that covers wire transfers, so it's a separate coverage that we offer. It's not built into the cyber. It's just it's a separate coverage we offer for those type of things. It's called computer fraud coverage. Is that included in here? No, ma'am, because the city's not carrying that coverage right now, but we can include it. Do you have any idea how much that is? Um, it's relatively cheap. I'd have to get uh, basically an application filled out for it so we can go to our underwriters and from there they price it. They have variables they look at when it comes to how many transfers you do, wire transfers you do a year. Approximately. Except two fraudulent ones. Okay. Well. So it's a simple application. I believe it's two pages. <coughs> but we do cover that sort of thing under the – it's just a different type of coverage that we, we've offered our cities. Thank you. Let's see, Jeff, thoughts? Yes, sir? Thoughts? You know, uh, I, uh, I'm i not making the decision at all. I just, I just put out there. I've, I've only insurance company I've really dealt with is TML with cities. And uh, – uh, 
the only the only difference is you have access to their attorneys and uh, I just want to ask you guys if I wanted to see what a coverage was needed for something how would I do that for example if they wanted to have a wine tasting or something here what well, how would I find out if we needed to get extra insurance for that or not you'd work with me first um, we've addressed some of these topics on the neighborhood pool and some of those things have come up through the course of my time so you just get a hold of me and we would work together and I'd get a hold of travelers and their underwriting department and whatnot so how long would it take you know not long at all I'm right across the highway I'll come over here and oh, I mean, with the travelers and all see here the difference I'm, I'm at is and I'll, I'll just tell him what happens I could email an underwriter TML and in 30 minutes I get an answer on one of the insurance things what we needed that's what I'm asking that would you know, be done and I want to make another point when you said about this including the professional official, public officials they're both two million dollars or four million facts so that's basically the same thing what what do you the employees liability the uh, employment practices liability down here where you said that uh, it was included public works is not the same I see a limit of two million four and then I see you add them up two million four well, yeah, so all I said was they're out, they, they share the same limit. So what you said, Jeff, was incorrect on that, okay? Right, because I said they shared the same limit. That's all I said was theirs shares the same limit with the public officials. Mine, EPLI, That's Travelers, right. is separate, and, the, and, and also the umbrella sits on top of that as well. So that's all I was stating. So um, did you want to mention anything about underwriting? No, that, that should be it, uh, Mr. Henson. So anytime you have a, a public event or any any concern or, or need a certificate of insurance. Uh, I mean, I, I will say when this accident happened, I got calls from travelers on it, you know, offering assistance and stuff on, on, and even an attorney, you know, to talk to about the wire stuff. At that point in time, we didn't know exactly what happened because we didn't have a Secret Service uh, report back. So we didn't know exactly what happened. Uh, and, you know, everybody that I talked to thought it was because, you know, it was an email coming out and all that kind of stuff, but it wasn't. But they did respond and they did call me on it. So I will say that for fact. But we yeah. haven't seen anything from that either. No. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just, uh, uh, I, as the mayor said, I read that article about those two and uh, it, it's a different world out there right now. I mean, there's some questions about some of the answers that were given about whether it's property or money, whether it's in our possession or not, or something like that. But I still don't think this is totally done yet because of uh, uh, interpretations that different people have or the different I things that happened and what's in possession, what's not in possession, or items like that. I think, you, I think regarding cyber, you mentioned that of the the point in the article that mentioned 22 communities that were hit in the last month. You mentioned that well. If a municipality backs up their data every night, then a lot of those 22 communities didn't fall prey to this, uh, the ransomware and they were willing to lose a day's worth of data to restore their files or something to that I effect. I would tell you, yes, I was at a city where last year we were hit and I could sit there and look on the computer and watch files on our ENCODE uh, server to start encrypting themselves. The, at the same time, simultaneously, all the printers in the city went off with these ransom notes, okay? They wanted $50,000 of Bitcoin. Unfortunately for them, I didn't know how to get Bitcoin, so they were out of luck there anyway. But we did have it backed up every day, and what happened was the people who, who did this, the, uh, they didn't have, they had their uh, IT outsourced also, came in, it took 12 hours. What they had to do was erase everything on the first one and come back and restore it all. Now, we did lose a day of data, which, you know, you got to go back and put in, and they had the city had a utility, so it was a lot of work to do, but still it had to be done. Um, but there wasn't any money paid for the ransom. So I have experienced it, and uh, it's very disturbing to see how the stuff you work with just start encrypting itself. Thank you. Yeah, and I, just, just to... Just to double on what um, Jeff was saying on the extortion piece where they're holding the city, you know, ransom, um, y'all can see the limits there. And again, 
I mean, TML, I'm sure, can update their proposal and whatnot to try to get to higher limits, as he stated. But the, the policy and, and, and what we've proposed have those. So, understood. Um, and then the last thing I'd ask if anybody here um, at the city has records since y'all were with TML for so many years before 2017 of the dividends that you received, maybe you could figure out kind of what the average dividend was trending, you know, because when we look at it, if it is a $31,000 difference in premium, it may take a long time to get the, that amount of dividends depending on what those checks look like. So um, thank you all. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks, Matt. Right. Mayor, did we spend uh, additional money for attorney's fees for these claims for the cyber thing that happened? We incurred a small separate one-time charge with an attorney to seek advice in the pa uh, in the wake of uh, Mr. Brennan's passing. And, um, and I'm, I'm glad to report that with the Secret Service funds having been returned to us, we're at a point where we can establish a plan to go forward to seek collection of the rest and there may end up being a situation where we may uh, we've got a couple of choices to make on how we handle that and it, it, it has to do with how our banking partner and us agree or disagree on the validity of our depository agreement that had technically expired uh, and whether they are required to honor it that's a discussion I've had with, with Ryan Henry a couple of times. And we may not want to push that if we want to seek a jury trial and, and go that route. But um, that, that would be the variable going forward. But there was a one-time charge of about $1,700, I believe. Uh, and and in, in the TML, you guys have a team that covers that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. One person, uh, our liability department. And Travelers does not? We do as well, sir. We have a, a attorneys here in our San Antonio office. So we have attorneys in our, in our Dallas. We have attorneys in our Dallas, Houston, and Austin office that are um, staff counsel hired by Travelers. And we also have what we call panel counsel. So there are attorneys across the state of Texas um, that we may hire as well. Uh, we, we pay for that. Um, if we feel the need that they'd be a better fit for a certain claim. So we have a claim in, in Midland. Uh, we have panel counsel in Midland uh, that we, we may hire um, to handle the, the, the claim, given they're the experts in the local jurisdictions. Um, and that's that's all travelers. Uh, uh, that's all included in the proposal. We wouldn't uh, charge you guys extra for that. I did be discuss this with uh, their breach coach. I think that was the title of the person. Okay. And um, had that conversation. Thank you, Hector. Um, if, if if the council doesn't have any further questions, would you guys like to? Do you feel sufficiently apprised of the distinctions between the providers to come to a conclusion? Anyone? For me, it's not just about the money, mm -hmm. and. I'm inclined to go back with TML because it's what they do. I mean, they're there to help municipalities. They know the issues that come up. And I think they just have more resources that are geared towards municipalities like, like us. And I'm inclined to agree. go back with them. I agree. Would someone like to move that we make a decision regarding insurance? Well, do you want to say something? No, I'm, I'm shaking my head in agreement. You are? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then I will move. Where's our? Where's the the agenda? Um, I will move that we approve TML for city insurance benefits. I second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The, the motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very Thank you, much. Matt. This is Thank a you. tough decision, and I appreciate all your effort. tough situation to deal with. Um, 
Next on our agenda was to discuss, take possible action to approve sublease and license agreements concerning electronic billboards. And uh, thank you, Hector. And um, there were some lengthy contract. Yes, Mayor, I'm sorry. There were like one was 66 pages, the other one was another 67 pages, so I sent it electronically. And I just wanted to ask, how did that work out for you? Was that more cumbersome? Or was that, I mean, I would have done all the pages for you, but I thought maybe electronically. Was I that something was that was fine. a good thing or not? Okay. I thought it was fine. The proposal yeah. part was only a few pages. The rest was the presentation yeah. packet. So I went ahead and, and did two copies of each for you there on the data, so that way in case you wanted to take another look at it. Super. Anybody wants it? You know, if uh, I, had a, oh, okay. I had a question about the redacted portion on the agreements, and I saw it and was, and I got, clarification as to what that was and that was uh, the redacted portion that's blacked out in the paperwork is referring to the previous offer that Burkett had made us uh, to Councilman and Howe and I that they amended and is in the final proposal so oh, okay. that's specifically what that refers to so it wasn't redacted for any other reason besides it not being valid any longer but it spells out the terms and the liquidity elements should they default, and uh, um, and it seemed to all be in order when I read through them. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Bo Burkett's here. You have questions or comments about them? Um, okay. It's legal jargon. It's 132 pages or 133. Just, just for the just for the record, Bo, you're not here to sweeten it up anymore, are you? <laughs> referring to page 26 the fourth paragraph no um i mean uh would anyone like to move to take action on the agreements as written actually i move that we um approve the um document with the changes that were submitted by um councilman truman and there was one more little tweak that yes. the attorney it's mentioned on page three of five on paragraph six, go ahead. Third line towards the end, it says easement. I just got to change it to uh, sublease. Oh, oh that's, yeah. that's that's it. Okay. And then I believe the changes that uh, from the word easement to the word sublease. Yes, and I believe uh, the changes that Debbie proposed have already been made, and we submitted those today. So should 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 it read? You move to to approve the sublease and license agreements. Is that what? Right. Okay. And then as amended. Yes, for, for this one. For, for so one more time. Well. Okay. <laughs> um, I make a motion that we approve the um, uh, sublease and licensing agreements as amended uh, regarding electronic billboards for the town of Hollywood Park. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Well, this concludes our meeting tonight. It is 5.56 p.m. Again, thank you.